All right. <laughs> What's up, friends? Uh, thanks for coming to our session. We're here to, uh, to start uh, talking a little bit about how GitOps has sort of changed everything for all five of us here. Uh, and hello to all of our friends online as well. Thanks for joining us from the virtual side of KubeCon. Uh, the room here is packed, and they were all very polite. Uh, we almost started early, but uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to start off with just a little bit of intros, because you know, at, at the end of the day, it kind of looks like we've got five friends up here uh, who are just bantering. Uh, and so why should you listen to us, and where do we come from, right? Uh, so over here on uh, the far side, we've got Christian Hernandez. Uh, Christian, you want to kind of uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am um, product manager at Red Hat, and I am the member of uh, Open GitOps. I'm a maintainer of Open GitOps. I am also um, a contributor to the Argo project, and um, the, I'm part of the, um, the Argo, um, I guess, communications uh, SIG group as well. Yeah, thanks, Christian. And Philip? Yes, my name is Philip Jansson. Uh, I work at Postnode Scorfos as uh, infrastructure architect. So I uh, work in our platform team with uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. Thanks, Philip. My name is Robert. I work as a principal cloud engineer at Amesto 42. We do cool stuff. Check us out. Uh, I am, um, well, for, for this panel, is, I'm, I'm a CNCF ambassador. Uh, I have, uh, I'm a lot of other things. Go to my LinkedIn. I don't want to spend all the time talking about myself, but I'm also one of the open GitOps maintainers and uh, a heavy GitOps advocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just yeah. a note here, you see I sort also of a use trend, it, I build uh, services with it, I do everything with it. We've got a couple of maintainers up here. Yeah. Uh, on, on to the next tier, Pinky Ravi. Hey, yeah, so yeah. I'm Priyanka Ravi, I go by Pinky. I am a developer experience engineer at WeWorks, and so, um, before that, I was actually at a company, an insurance company in the US called State Farm. And there I actually helped set up GitOps on our Kubernetes platform um, using Flux, so. Yeah, very cool user story uh, that led to uh, Pinky being part of the yeah. Flux team. Yeah, that's how I ended up joining. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then, hey friends, uh, also uh, an, a weave worker in spirit yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, my name's Always Lee Kapili. Yeah. Uh, I'll be our uh, spicy panel moderator today. Uh, I'm a developer advocate with the VMware Tanzu team, uh, Flux project member, and also uh, fond of the folks with the Carvel project and what they're building there. Uh, and I will be uh, helping these folks, uh, showing you the guide of where GitOps has kind of come from and uh, sort of where we're going. And uh, thanks so much for coming and joining with us. So um, yeah, Christian, Philip, Robert, Pinky, I'm gonna be uh, opening up with a question on just what brought you to GitOps and, and how did you decide that you needed this sort of technical methodology in your practicum, in your, in your life, right? Yeah, uh, who wants to start? I, I, I can at least start with this one. Um, the, what, what really like attracted me to GitOps and um, the, you know, all, the, all the buzz around it and all the practices around it was, it was really kind of an evolution of things we were we as an industry were trying to do like all along with various um, you know scripts and automation and processes and um, you know with with Kubernetes right with with uh, the, the expansion of Kubernetes and with, with it blowing you know blowing up the industry like we now had a platform where a lot of those things was possible and so um, I think the, the the very first thing is like GetOps to me in the beginning already seemed to mature even if it was, even if it, it still is, kind of just a little um, early um, in, in the evolution of GetOps, but um, it's because of all the stuff that you know us as practitioners, uh, you know DevOps, CI/CD folks mm -hmm. have been trying infrastructure folks, right? Infrastructure as code, we're trying to do a lot of these these things already. So that yeah. what attracted to me is like it was almost like mature in the you know from the beginning. So mm -hmm. that was that was kind of so you were seeing the results of maybe the decade prior of continuous delivery and of like mature operations with pull based workflows and so you saw that sort of realizing itself in a new world of tools exactly exactly it's just okay. it, it's it's kind of like, and I, I think that's that's a great way of put it, putting it mm -hmm. in i was seeing it realized um with all these new tools and with the cloud native um, and where were you working tools. when you when you first sort of made those initial realizations with kubernetes specifically actually you know i've, I've been i was uh, i was at red hat uh -huh. And I've been working, you know, I've been right half for, you know, nine plus years. So it, it was, you know, early on, 
um, that I saw the, it was really in, 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 in the evolution of Kubernetes when, when I first saw mm -hmm. those, you know, kind of declarative um, programming sort models. Of, yeah, programming models and like kind of like, oh, okay, like there's, there's this um, whole new methodology of way of thinking. Mm -hmm. I'd love to uh, turn the question over to you, Pinky, in the same vein, uh, because yeah. uh, you, so, so yeah. Christian came from a home of open source, a yeah. steward. Right. Yeah, and I was not. <laughs> and yeah. you came from <laughs> yeah. State Farm, yeah. uh, enterprise bureaucracy. Right. Uh -huh. So what um, is that like? Yeah, yeah. No, no, he's not wrong. If if y'all aren't familiar with State Farm um, here in Europe, it's it's actually uh, an ins a large insurance company back in the U.S. I think it's like number one in auto. So it's like a very highly regulated industry. Like we had a lot of compliance and auditing standards we had to meet. Lots of red tape. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the first time I heard of GitOps and like the company heard of it was actually we sent two engineers to KubeCon back in 2019 and they came back and they were talking about this thing called GitOps and they were like, man, we have to show you this stuff. This is so cool. And they were showing us Flux and they were like, this, this like tool is amazing. And we were like, yeah, it's great. Like this GitOps concept is so cool. So we tried to take those principles and we were actually um, moving like some stuff to AWS at the time. So we were... Um, trying to fit those principles to our AWS deployments. We didn't fully get, we didn't get the pull model right, but but we did um, do our best to make it GitOps. We were using Terraform Enterprise to do our deployments for Terraform. And then, um, yeah, and then, then we started doing the Kubernetes platform. And when, at the time, we actually didn't really do a, like a comparison. We just kind of were like, we, we researched it and we're like, oh, let's go with Flux. That's the one that had been talked about at the conference. You and said, um, I think in an anecdote when we were talking that that was a, a Google search. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was okay. a Google search. Uh -huh. We typed in oh, GitOps. GitOps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and WeWorks popped up. And so we were like, okay, let's let's uh, go with this. And <laughs> it's been that way ever since. But yeah. So, um, what year was that? That was 2019, 2020? Yeah. No, maybe, no, 2020 by that point. Yeah. So 2020, GitOps yeah. is finding its way to yeah. the enterprise. Yeah. And it, and it was a lot of work. So, like, those of you that are going through, I think, trying to, like, you know, start GitOps at your company. I really relate with y'all, especially if y'all are in regulated industries. Like we had to make sure that we met compliance standards. We had to have auditing requirements. Like, and then we had a platform team that already existed for Kubernetes. So we had to like convince them that this is the, like a good way to go because in, they weren't even doing declarative, um, a declarative approach at all. So it was a lot of work. And then the developers have to be onboarded. It was, yeah, lots of people to convince. So I feel for y'all. <laughs> Philip, Robert, do you want to um, kind of talk a little bit about where you discovered GitOps and, and how it made its way into your workflow? Yeah, so our story is a bit different. Uh, we started off with Kubernetes about a year ago, uh, and we did it together with Red Hat. So we did, uh, they have a concept called Container Adoption Journey. So uh, we have a dedicated team uh, within the company, uh, and then they bring in a consultant to help us with the journey. So they basically say, said that, yeah, this is the way you should do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Way, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's 2022. Right? Yeah, that's great. OK. So yeah. yeah, that was really nice. And uh, along with the project, there's a lot of other dependencies around Kubernetes that you have to think about as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, our approach in the beginning was like, it would be really nice to do everything uh, infrastructure as code, like deploying stuff uh, in public cloud and, and so on. Uh, on-premises, load balancers, everything. So uh, we didn't think that we would be able to do it because uh, we haven't really been doing this before and it seems pretty hard. But uh, yeah, we end up having like almost everything within our OpenShift deployment uh, defined as infrastructure as code and using GitOps. The, you use those two uh, words uh, or those terms, infrastructure as code and, and GitOps. Uh, where, where sort of... Uh, do you start calling a methodology infrastructure as code versus uh, maybe when you get to Kubernetes world? Yeah, so we're doing some infrastructure as code that I think is not GitOps. So we're, use, we're using uh, Terraform to deploy stuff in Azure. Uh, and that was basically doing uh, manual CLI deployments uh, in Terraform. Yeah. And also using like uh, GitLab pipelines. So uh -huh. that is not really automatic reconciliation and stuff like that. Someone has to push the button. There's interrupts yeah. and people make decisions. Exactly. That you, you get back into the social loop of what is our problem, where are we getting to, and the infrastructure is sticky enough to where you have to do that. 
Yeah, and also when we're deploying uh, Kubernetes clusters, uh, we're using Ansible to do that. Mm -hmm. So there is also some uh, manual uh, uh -huh. interactions when we do that. So it's not really GitOps, but it's within the infrastructure as code realm, at mm -hmm. least. Yeah, thanks. And then Robert, you yeah. you are quite active uh, with with Open GitOps. Yeah. What, what's your what's your story? How did you get here? Uh, well, I think it's kind of like the natural evolution of of it all. Like starting out as uh, you know what we in Nor Norway call a potato, just doing everything, <laughs> and uh, and then I kind of just Is that potato. Potato. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then I, I like I found out about email. That's not great to work with because end users. So I stopped doing that. Clients don't want to do that because end users. And and then I came into the infrastructure uh, part of things and uh, really discovered Terraform and infrastructure as code as like uh, the way to do stuff uh, in, in in the cloud. And you can't really do infrastructure in any other way. And through that, I was also like just like looking for ways to. Uh, to to do like an even like better job at deploying stuff uh, efficiently, and I just kind of fell over GitOps at some point. Uh, don't exactly remember where, but uh, and that's just when the the uh, the GitOps working group uh, was kicking off, and people were starting to define these principles. Uh, so I kind of came in really early um, and set from. They look easy, but there was a lot of meetings per. Uh, principle. Like, yeah, I mean, if if you would so uh, kindly, could could you rattle some of these off and maybe? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Feel feel free to stand up, maybe. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, so I'm putting so the, Robert on the spot. Yeah. Uh, so the first one is declarative. Like the, you're you want to. It's all about defining the the you have your def, uh, desired state of your system. That that is the entire thing. And we want first of all it to be declarative. You don't want to have imperative like steps defined. We want just this is what we want. Mm -hmm. And then we so want kube cuddle create and kube cuddle update. Those are imperative. That's commands. imperative. That's that's a yeah. specific step. If that fails for some reason, you know you have to intervene. That uh -huh. that means you actually have to be like we wanted to just be able to define this is what we want, mm -hmm. and then. But even a tool as simple as kube cuddle apply uh, is starting to get into declarative here. Right? Yes. It's one piece of the problem. Yeah, uh, you know, at, uh, at some point. Yes. But, but, and uh, we can kind of split hairs about that, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. um, and, and the second one is that that desired state needs to be uh, uh, stored somewhere that's versioned and immutable, which basically just means that you uh, you don't change the state uh, um, as it's running. You're defining a complete new version, which means that if something happens, you can always revert back to a state that is actually working because you you know this because it's, it's all versioned and, and immutable. And um, and and when I say these words, they are very, we, we thought about um, making sure that we don't like actually say Kubernetes controllers and Git and stuff like that because, you know, we feel it's, it's higher than that even though it's called GitOps. So this is not a Kubernetes specific thing, right? You, it is, is not, but it's uh -huh. so much easier if you're doing it in Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Like you, you could do this, but uh -huh. you would have to, you have to make a lot of things happen. So it's fair to say that GitOps is not equivalent to Kubernetes and working with Kubernetes, but that no. Kubernetes is a huge reason why the way of working is changing yes. amongst all of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah, th yeah. That, that's what kind of enabled us to do this mm -hmm. and you can do it in other things, but it just, just show the way, so to speak. This is one of the reasons I get so excited about GitOps. It's because it's not like the computer science that makes Kubernetes possible is new, right? But the democratization of that Kubernetes mm. resource model, the KRM, mm. creating a different programming model for the way that we share big distributed systems, it's begging for us to change the way we work. Yeah. And that's exciting, right? Because because it, we need to change the way we work if we want different systems, right? Yep. Right. Cool. Well, um, then, in in the spirit of changing the way we work, I'd, I'd love to take it back to Philip, right? Because you've got an organization that's that's changing the way it works. Yeah. Right. So uh, one of our our next uh, kind of pre-desired uh, canned questions here in my cheat sheet um, is. How far along is your organization in adopting GitOps then? Right? You said you brought some smart consultants yeah. and they said, this is the way. Some, some, Let yeah, me show hats. you the way. Got some red hats. Right? Yeah. 
and then and then you they they got in and you have this mixture of infrastructure as code as well but you were surprised right by by how much could be done right what did yeah. that look like uh so uh, we haven't come that far yet with uh kubernetes as mm -hmm. i said we started about a year ago uh but everything we do within kubernetes that is uh get ups it feels different than the way of working before yeah so we're kind of stuck in two camps. We have the traditional way of working and we have the new way of working. Uh -huh. And then that's also correlates to the teams that are working with the different things. Like yeah. we have still our traditional infrastructure teams that are working with networking uh -huh. and storage and uh, virtualization. And then we have uh, the teams that are working with the new platform. Uh, so yeah, and it's kind of a struggle for me as an infrastructure architect to try to get everyone to get along uh, and uh, try to uh, get people to adopt the new ways of thinking and uh, uh, how to evolve and uh, how, how you do things. It's funny because it's almost like if you were around in other communities, say like DevOps days 10 years ago, you could hear somebody almost with the same exact experience, right? Like it's not necessarily the tooling, but the changing the way that we work across teams can be kind of difficult, right? Yeah. You're feeling that pain a little bit, but that it's also interesting and worth it. Yeah, it is. But, and, and also I think that changing the way we think about things and uh, getting into this mindset of everything should be declarative, uh, it really open up, opens up new ways of thinking. Uh -huh. Like I, I think some people ha here have heard about uh, Backstage so when I first heard about that was, whoa, you can GitOps this? Mm. So it's ba basically GitOpsing our old uh, uh, enterprise architecture software. That Your workflows, the way that developers yeah. and everybody who wants to touch and change the system like interacts with each other and gets yeah. information. And also like the, the actual information, the shards of the systems that you have within the company uh, before or uh, now we still have those uh, systems that keep them in big databases and it's a hassle to change. Can't we just put that in Git instead? That would be great. Can you drill it, it more into that, right? Because I, I think you said something really intellectually interesting there, right? We've got these old systems. Yeah. They're, they're a pain to operate. What, what do you mean by pulling the state into Git? Yeah, so uh, I was talking about uh, enterprise architecture systems where we basically model our entire uh, organization, like both the systems that we sell or systems that we build uh, and all the services that uh, makes up those systems. So uh, in order to know what we have, uh, to have uh, an inventory of all, everything we have, uh, we need to document it somewhere, right? Uh, and there are systems that do this, uh, and you have to use some application, put that into a database, and fill in metadata, and uh, enter like um, dependencies between different objects. Mm -hmm. So why can't we j just use a declarative setup, use Git to store it, we have version control? Uh, con have you seen this in practice too, Christian? You're, I see you nodding a little bit on terms in, in, in like how to deal with these stateful systems and, and kind of get more knowledge yeah, about them. Yeah, yeah, and it's um, so some of these things. So it's like a GetOps will, um, as as Philip was mentioning, is um, will will want you to have like some of these systems in Get. Right, so like once you start using GitOps in a Kubernetes native environment, you start seeing the advantages that it gives you, right? And then you start looking at some of the more traditional infrastructure, some of the more, um, you know, the way, mm -hmm. I hate using the word traditional because it's not like, it's not like it's not valid, right? But it's like stuff we need to do. Those things are sitting around and yeah. they're, they're keeping all of our humanity. Running. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> we had keeping the, like the lights on, right? Like, yes. Um, mm -hmm. But like you kind of look at some of these other, other, um, you know, infrastructure, you know, traditional kind of workflows and like, like mm -hmm. trying, trying to model that mm -hmm. after, you know, what you're doing here in GitOps. Changes so. what you remember to document. Yes. It changes yes, exactly. how you communicate about a system. Maybe now you want to start changing the way your inputs work too. 
Yes, right. exactly. And and the uh, how how you interface with the system, right? Like uh -huh. so, like GitOps, and, and there there it goes. Um, <laughs> Mouse wiggling. Yeah, no, hold on. I think you might have to. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. No credentials. Yeah, no credentials for, needed. for the immediate sleep. You now you're now certified. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just trying to take you know some of these uh, the the interface of working with your system now is kind of it, you know in Git. Right, we it doesn't have to be in Git because of the principles, but you know, let's let's keep this a little simpler. Um, yeah, you I interface mean, with your system with Git. Even just making a manual change and maybe reflecting that you changed something. Yeah, Git, it, you know? ex exactly. Like yeah. who made that change? It's like, well, mm -hmm. we can do some of that stuff even now. As you know, they mentioned infrastructure as code. We're kind of differentiating between the two. It's like you can kind of start doing some of those things mm -hmm. as well because now you're going to be like, how can we can't get ups that? Like, let's let's try to move some of that stuff over. It reminds me of the crawl, walk, run model that was so often popularized when talking about changing our organization's way of working in DevOps, right? So some of these lessons from the past decade, it seems like they're still haunting us. Yes. Right? Yeah. Tech debt, right, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, that's some really interesting notes about working with sticky systems and, and also pain between teams uh, in a real organization. Uh, Pinky, you said something in your intro that actually really caught my attention, yeah. uh, which is that when you were in this high compliance, high regulation mm -hmm. environment, yeah. you know, auto insurance, very exciting stuff, right, people? <laughs> and home, yeah. auto and home. Uh, auto and home, <laughs> right? We still got the safe <laughs> ones out. Person <laughs> over here, and we're going to cut it there before it becomes a legal issue. Um, the, you, you mentioned that in this, in this desire to go to GitOps, that your your platform team was using Kubernetes, but they were using it in a very imperative way, in a yes. different way. Yeah. yeah. And you had some convincing to do. Yes. Yes. Uh, lots of it. Was that um, the, easy? I'm sure that was no, easy. No. Yeah. It was so easy. No. Lots of meetings where me and my teammate were basically joking about just eating popcorn, and just watching the drama, because they're you know. So we had like the compliance people saying like, hey. Our, our Kubernetes platform was not locked down. Everyone had access to admin, mm. which is crazy because like for a highly regular, like we were constantly audited, but the platform had not been audited yet uh -huh. and it was going to be audited and it was going to fail. Yeah. <laughs> so that was like the conversations we had were like, hey, this is like more urgent than y'all realize because I know it's fun and games that like everybody has, you know, admin access and nobody wants to lose it, but at the same time, we have to lock this down and have like meet our requirements. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of conversations between like the audit, like the the compliance team, mm -hmm. and the like Kubernetes platform team, and we were the delivery engineering team, and so it was it was a lot of uh, getting them on board. We had to do a lot of proof of concepts, actually showing them like how it would look using multi tenancy, um, and this is what it would look in code. And then we showed them it's like not that bad, you know what I mean? Like we had sandbox environments that we were like, this is what it would look like. This is what the onboarding process would look like. It's not as painful as you so think. So you, you made proof of concepts. Yeah. You, you showed yeah. what the world could be. Exactly, yeah. We were like, it's, it's not as scary as it sounds. But that yeah. technical implementation, the reason that there's convincing around it is it has social consequences, right? Yeah. Like yeah. now we're talking about changing people's access. We're talking exactly. about the way that people describe their changes to the system completely yeah. changing. And, and that would change their jobs too, because now they're and, gonna have to and answer they have more. to own it. Exactly, they're gonna have to answer to those people that are like, hey, where'd my access go? And yeah, it's, what, now they have to learn how to use Flux. What you, it's kind of, uh, you, you touched, if I inter interject real quick, it's kind of, when, when I talk to people about like GitOps and you know start talking about like what, what's happening, that kind of like the first thing, you reminded me, like the first thing they say is like, what do you mean it's automatically applied? To production, and um, and I always say like GitOps kind of reveals some of the pitfalls that you may have that you may not know, mm -hmm. right? In in your environment, so that's that's a, that's a great story. That is a good point, actually. Yeah, the roadblocks yeah, sure. that are actually uh, causing friction to shipping, that then that back pressure encourages people to bundle changes into riskier blocks of, of code, right? Or or changes to the system. Right, and and so it's like if if it's slow on the path to production, you know things are people are going to bundle more and more, and your changes themselves will become more risky, right? And and that that's an anti pattern. We we know from the past decade of of research, like we can point to data that says, oh, you should watch out for that. That's dangerous. 
So, so it sounds like if, if somebody's not doing continuous delivery and there's reasons for that, that, that GitOps sort of reveals that? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, yeah, it kind of just reveals that. It, it reveals some of those things mm -hmm. That, uh, like you said, and I think when, when, what you said about like bundling changes, mm -hmm. that's and then you know that big change goes through all at once because, as you said, like it's it slows. You know, if you if you know you're going to make a change and it's going to take forever, you're going to bundle those changes mm -hmm. versus you know incrementally you know sending those changes. So that, we that's already a great know point, yeah. from the past, like continuous yes. delivery, yeah. it solves yeah. it solves that symptom. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're saying GitOps is continuous delivery, or it, uh, it, it's part. It, it's part of yeah. continuous, continuous delivery, delivery yeah. is built into GitOps. Yes. All right. You hear to hear, folks. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, um, friends, I'm I'm delighted that we've talked so much about the lessons of the past and how they inform our new systems, our new community. Um, but uh, GitOps is kind of this this funky marketing term that we got going on. Um, I've got to ask the group, why do we need a, a new word for this if we've been doing it for a decade, right? Ask Alexis. No, I'm just kidding. What is the need? <laughs> Alexis, yeah. What is the need to define GitOps? Right? Uh, so, panel. so actually, uh, you you might have a better answer for that. But uh, Alexis, uh, the CEO of WeWorks, actually coined that. Sorry, I'm not talking to the mic. Um, the CEO of WeWorks actually coined the term. Uh, I don't remember what year, but 2017. Robert is saying. Um, and so it was actually like so. So Flux was created because there was like an outage that happened at WeWorks. And they realized, like, we don't want that to happen again. Like, it took so much time to start back up. So they created this tool that would, you know, do that automatically and just, like, take the declarative nature. And so then he coined this term GitOps. So the idea is that, you know, you're, you're focusing on Git as a single source of truth and that you're pulling versus pushing. And there's so many benefits that come with this model because, like, this is what I saw at State Farm even. Like, the fact that if for some reason... <laughs> with their admin access, somebody goes in and deletes a deployment, it stands right back up. You know what I mean? Like there's, there, whatever you have in your code is what's actually realized. And, and that's so powerful, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I would agree. The, the entire de idea of that, the actual desired state of the system is stored in Git. Uh, I, I have discussions with people who kind of don't understand that fully. Like, what happens if someone changes uh, stuff, you know, on the Kubernetes? Well, it will be rolled back because the desired state is in Git mm -hmm. in our in this case. Um, and for, for me, for me, it kind of um, so you you know we have CI uh, CD tools and we you know been using that for for this and and uh, I I like to call like. I like to like not think of it as continuous delivery, but the continuous deployment because mm -hmm. that is what it is. When your software is deliverable, I don't want you know all these different angles of how to get it out. I want it to just get out there, mm -hmm. uh, and we can we can do advanced stuff like uh, progressive delivery and and have it be delivered to uh, you know a certain number of users and all those kind of things. We can do that, but baseline is I just want when we have something new that's supposed to be in production, I want it out there. Like I, don't, I don't want that to be an entire pipeline to go through and that could possibly fail and then someone has to troubleshoot it. Like it should just work, uh, which, I, which I think like the, 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 the various GitOps tools uh, mm -hmm. kind of solves. In a very... Continuous deployment. Yeah. yeah, I said delivery earlier, but yeah. deployment is even but, more accurate. Yeah, because yeah. For, for, you know, mm. I, I, people have said like, uh, I think actually Alexis, Alexis also said that in the blog post that we, we've been trying to do this for so many years now we have the technology to make it so. Let's build tooling that's even closer to what the what the research says. Yes. Not that people aren't already doing it. Not that existing tools can't do it already, mm -hmm. right? But look, this is an idea that we need to replicate. Yeah. And that and we we've talked a lot about Flux because Flux was kind of first, mm. right? But Flux is definitely not the only thing around no, anymore, no. right? I mean, we've got an Argo T-shirt over here, <laughs> right? And uh, and I I'm with the Carvel project. We've got a GitOps tool as well, yeah. right? Now we've got this word, and that that same word with all of these principles can be said about all of those tool sets, mm -hmm. right? And and amongst a bunch of open interfaces, a new programming model. So so this is interesting, right? What's happening, right? Uh, Christian, yeah. how's it how's it been for you to see GitOps growing and and maturing and becoming a thing with all of these new people joining the community? Yeah, and I think um, I think that uh, what you mentioned is interesting because, like, we all kind of 
you know, come from like different tool sets. And I think it's really interesting that, you know, we, the, the, um, like the principles and the idea of GitOps drove the building of the tools. And we all kind of ended up with the, you know, you've, you know, similar, if not the same kind of workflows, um, regardless of what tool sets we were using. Um, because, you know, we kind of looked at like the principles, we kind of looked at like the work, um, the GitOps workflows and what it means to do GitOps and then build the tools to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think, um, it, it's, it's very, very interesting. I think, um, I'm, I'm excited to see it evolve. Mm -hmm. Um, I've even had conversations with a few folks, um, around at, at least internally at red hat folks reached out to me from the ansible team saying hey how can we be more GitOps like right so i've been kind of working with like other you know other um uh, other projects you know asking me you know, like oh how can we be more GitOps like what it's what you know what does it actually mean can you explain the principles more in detail that sort of thing and so i think seeing things evolve that way um you know i'm i'm, I'm excited to see how we're gonna get ops you know uh stateful infrastructure you know what i mean that that's i think that's and, like the ultimate just next to step. highlight what what you mentioned there folks red hat folks from the ansible project asking you how to be more GitOps like yes right yeah. not that they don't know how devops and continuous delivery and continuous deployment work not that they haven't been around since years before kubernetes became a thing but this word is actually important to configuration management as, as a whole okay yeah great well um we have hit a lot of points here, right? Where GitOps kind of came from, where it was in our personal stories, pain in dealing with a social organization, lessons learned from where we came from. Uh, we, though, as a, as a group of uh, people who love collaborating together, uh, recognize that all of the stories that happen from the practitioner community and all of the things that you all in the audience and up there virtually as well, are fighting with are, are important. And we want this panel to serve you well. Uh, we've got quite a few minutes uh, still left for questions. Uh, who who wants a mic to, to ask a question to our lovely panelists over here? I saw this hand. Yeah, hi, what's your name, Sergio? Yeah. Hello, um, my name is Sergio. Um, thank you, everyone. It's a very interesting panel. So um, my company, we use in Terraform for infrastructure as platform, as cold, sorry. As, as Terraform you Enterprise, you said? Terraform for infrastructure as code. Okay. And um, the way we do it is we install Kubernetes, then deploy Argo CD, main components like um, Cert Manager, um, external DNS, which you would expect, and everything else is managed by Argo CD. Now, I often struggle with, with um, knowing what's GitOps material, what's not. As in, should I install this application from Argo CD, or should I install this application as part of my core infrastructure from a different um, um, installation method like Terraform. So I wonder what the panel thinks, what's GitOps material and what's not GitOps material? Yeah, do, yeah, dude, well, or did, because I, I know, because you, you, you've done a lot of with, with Terraform. Yeah. Uh, so it it is kind of a hard question, but because traditionally it would be like you're setting up your infrastructure with infrastructure as code and then you would get and start the GitOps process, right? Um, which is perfectly fine. You know, that, that works. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're doing that and that makes sense to you and your team, perfect. Uh, uh, but having Terraform uh, in Git and then running pipelines to do your Terraform stuff, that doesn't, that's not necessarily GitOps, you know. Um, you can set it up in a way so that it, it works like that, but uh, in itself is not GitOps. What, what you can do if you want to go on the journey of like starting to do uh, actual, you know, I should trademark that, how to do actual GitOps <laughs> with Terraform. <laughs> yeah, uh, which uh, you know, go to YouTube and search for that and you find a talk from me that's called exactly that. And us. Uh, and us as well. Um, you, you could use some sort of controller to kind of like getting it into that, uh, that Terraform space. And there's the TF controller from WeWorks that works with Flux. There, there's yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, and there, there, there's other operators and tools that you can also implement. The problem, uh, or not the problem, with one of the things with the TF controller is, it, since it's from WeWorks, it, it actually works with Flux. So it's using some of the Flux components, so it doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. 
what you could do is use this project called Flamingo, which is uh, you know, basically you you have Argo running on top of the, the tooling from Flux, which that means you could extend it. So you could have your Argo uh, do basically use the TF controller. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to find some tool that does, you know, kind of bind it all together. So um, I, I have experience tried some of them. Usually it just ends up being a, a, a something that runs, a HashiCorp also has one called Terraform Operator. It, it works best with Terraform Cloud. So if, you, if you're not do, using that as a tool, you, you know, you would be best served finding something that fits for you. Uh, also, uh, outside of the Kubernetes world, um, mm -hmm. there is a bot that you can install called Atlantis uh, that will yes. run against your source code yes. uh, when you make pull requests to your Terraform. Uh, and that can help you get to more of an active reconciliation yeah. workflow that hits some of these points if, say, you're missing tooling that... Uh, if your Terraform kind of uh, and, and process you, and is you not can like sure. even with like Terraform Cloud, you can yeah. get it Terraform to some Cloud, sort of state where it looks super easy like this. To use Terraform and, Cloud, and, yeah. and it's very much you know yeah. actually kind of get offs, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I was using, so that's what I was doing. I was using Terraform Enterprise. Um, there's talk way like way back when out there. If you look me up, there's a talk like way old talk about mm -hmm. um, using Terraform Enterprise um, yeah. for for like trying to like mock this. Yeah. Cool. Terraform and GitOps. Thank you, Sergio, for the question. Uh, uh, we had a, the mic over here for your next question. Okay, it's working. I was just trying. So um, I want to give a little bit of a return of experience because we started Yak Infrastructure as Code and GitOps back in my company um, in 2020 with our cloud transformation. And we arrive at a point in which I personally have an issue with GitOps and I wanted to have a little bit of your opinion, which I find that it doesn't really work well today at scale. We have a pletoria repository. We are also a partner of Red Hat. We have more than 300 clusters, OpenShift clusters out there. How do you manage such high volume of repositories, which they have all dependencies on each other? Yes, Argo CD could be the answer when you deploy things in Kubernetes. Completely agree with you. But when you have to interact with resources that are completely outside of a Kubernetes system, and that you need to manage pull request across tens of repository to make sure that your application is fully running and one PR builds fails because Terraform, so sorry, but it's not bulletproof, it fails. How do you reconcile with all of that? Today, we are at a situation in which some of us at our companies, they are not really buying the GitOps drugs, mm -hmm. to be frank with you. And yeah. I wanted to hear a little bit of your opinion on that. Yeah, so um, the your question is mainly around. So it w I would really be asking a lot about like you know using if you're using mono repo versus using poly repo versus using um, yeah so versus using the, you know um, a, a lot of repos um, together right like collecting them as 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 a yeah, yeah. So there's the separation of responsibilities of like, for example, the, a big one would be uh, separating like the infrastructure um, get ops, right, versus like the application specific get ops. And you may have many application um, specific uh, repos um, having there. And there are, you're, you know, you say your issues like they're all interrelated, right? So like one, one can fail and the others, um, you know, the, the, it'll essentially affect everything, right? Like you have one not reconciling for whatever reason, which then affects the other ones because they're dependent on, yeah. So the, um, a, a lot of that is, uh, I think comes down to process, right? Um, trying to, uh, you know, coordinate um, different pull requests with, you know, different people, uh, different organizations, right? Uh, that usually, like you said, at scale, the issue becomes um, communication between, um, between teams and coordination between teams trying to um yeah yeah no i can hear you yeah no and i'll, I'll repeat what, what you said
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's Scott. Hey, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to give the mic? Yeah, let me run the mic to Scott over here. Scott Rigby, uh, maintainer, open GitOps. Uh, hey, yeah. everybody. Uh, I just wanted to reply to your comment um, it, because it is an open forum, right? We'll see. We'll see. Okay, cool. Um, and I know it's like ending, so people have to leave, and uh, mm -hmm. glad that you were able to make it. Um, but, you know, that. I'm wondering, there seems to be a, a, a jump in a way to say, our company's not, not, uh, not buying into GitOps. But then you go on to say, well, you know, the problem is really our applications are spread across like infrastructure, infrastructure hundreds of repos or whatever, and how do, we, how do we manage all that? And my question to you is, how would you manage that whether or not you were using GitOps? That, that, that's actually a good question. So that's okay. Why, that's yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm monopolizing. I don't really want to do it. I apologize for the rest yeah. of the morning. Yeah, I mean, stop me if you don't want it, but... but I, uh, I do think, yeah, thank you, thank you for the uh, detailed and passionate Can question. And, um, yeah, just to be respectful of everyone's time, let's... Uh, the answer to this question is that, um, it, to Christian's point, to Scott's point, uh, the complexity you're running into is not a problem with GitOps tooling. Uh, it is a process and complexity problem that is uh, older than configuration management. Uh, and uh, the same sorts of pains and joys and victories that are waiting for your teams uh, have been well studied and uh, that, that there's, there's practitioners from the, from the last decade, uh, but that you're feeling those things with new tools and that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So we, let's do just, do you have a quick question? I can try. I can try right. to make it short. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, this is a little bit related, although not as long, I can promise you that. Um, the thing is, at our company, we have a situation where we have uh, components uh, that is actually uh, stateful components that we need to uh, beef up. It's thousands of them, and we need to turn down on a daily basis. So it's, going, it's very much more dynamic in the nature. So we are doing GitOps in all our, what, what do you say, kind of more static situations that we've got. That makes a whole lot of sense. But when we have a very dynamic situation that we partially do, uh, we find it difficult to have GitOps actually to help us out in that one because it takes too much time just to, to save all the files and all the changes to files. So what we do instead, and you might prove me wrong because we're doing something wrong in this sense, uh, is that we in def instead we, we do it directly with uh, some coded access into GitOps, uh, sorry, to, uh, to uh, Kubernetes in order to start up these individual uh, stateful sets with individual configurations. So that's what we do. It's more like a comment, but I, yeah, that's about it. Oh, great. Uh, well, well it, you know, it's one of those things where uh, uh, if you can keep it stateless, you, it's all sort of all very much easier. Yeah. Love to have that. <laughs> yeah. So, like, like using external sources for those kind of things would be like my suggestion in in most cases. But I, I kind of see the point, and it's one of those things where, like, I th I think all of us probably could help yeah. you look into it, <laughs> based on what you're having to deal with. Yeah, and and also I think uh, at some of these conversations, and I don't know, and you know, we can do a hallway thing after you see just explain a little bit more, but. I've always, um, GitOps has made a lot of, uh, at least people, uh, at least us internally at Red Hat, by the way, we dog food, so we, <laughs> we, we run into the same problems. But with folks that I, that I talk to, um, it always ends up being that a lot of people see CI and CD as one thing, whereas GitOps, they all of a sudden become decoupled. You have a, a, um, a, 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 a asynchronous task and now all of a sudden the synchronous task that you're trying to coordinate with the, with the asynchronous task. And then some of those things, um, I, I, uh, I always end up saying, try to do some of the things that you're describing, maybe not all is possible, in CI, right? Try to do some of that before it comes you know, to that very last piece, that little, that GitOps piece. Um, 
and and it, and it's only like the growing pains of like trying to decouple CI and CD because for so long we we just kind of glommed them together as like one process. So that's um, you know again like there's a lot of people having that same pain because you know like you know we internally have that same pain trying to decouple some of these the, the asynchronous tasks and synchronous tasks. So. Yeah, in the end of the day, uh, stateful problem solving is a reality of what we're all trying to accomplish when, in these bigger teams on these bigger systems. And you'll never get away from that part, right? But in, in where GitOps can help us, uh, we can find the declarations, we can uh, let the, the computers, these very complex computers, whether it's Kubernetes or your cloud systems, uh, follow a little bit more of a desired state. So it makes it a bit easier to work with our team and focus on the, the harder imperative problems. So, and that, that gets as well to uh, our comment, or uh, our more complex question earlier, which was thank you for that. But um, yeah, friends, we're a little bit over time. Uh, thanks so much for staying with us. It's uh, Christian, Philip, Robert, Pinky, and Lee. And um, thank you for, for your- Thank you, thank questions. you everyone.